Hello, hello everyone. Happy Tuesday. Welcome to Strange Parts. How's everybody doing? Hey, Hammer Cam Calm from Tiffin, Ohio. Hey, Robolathe. Hey, Krabs. Hey, DJ Marlis. Robolathe. Welcome. How's everybody doing out there? Hey, Skate Rat. Hi, Memonex. Glad to have you all here. Sipping my tea. Mm. Hey, Bluebird. Glad you're doing well. Ah, the age old tradition of optimizing your computer to run games better. Back in my day, we optimized the, uh, what was it, autoexec.bat on the floppies that ran games back when I was a kid. It's part of how I got into, into computers. I was tweaking autoexec.bat to, to run better. I think that's what it was. Hey, little shrimpo. Oh, <laughs> who did you just get done watching? Don't let me keep you up. Mm. Oh. Hey, Eagle. Yeah, things are going all right today. I'm having a little bit of a slow day, but thought I'd do some streaming on this keyboard. Let's see if we can finish up this keyboard before the day's out. Oh, Code Miko. I'll have to check her out. Go subscribe, and then I won't miss her. Code Miko. Go. Still playing with this Atreus keyboard that uh, Jesse from Keyboard IO gave me. Oh, I have seen her. This is wild. This is the Code Miko. Is the uh, like. Uh, animated character on the screen. Yeah. Oh yes, config.sys as well. I remember that. Yeah, Lushun, but don't don't let me keep you from going to bed. I understand. We all need our sleep. Hi there, A ain't. Well, should we jump into making some keyboards? I'm feeling like Diving in here. Thanks, little Shrimpo. We will. I think we will. So. Oh man. Not enough hours in the day to fix all the little things that need to be fixed. So here's what I'm working with. This is that Treus that I've been playing with. Um. Let's see. We don't need switches yet. The next thing we're going to do is put on the keyboard switch sockets on this thing. So if you're new to this project, we're building up a corn chocolate kit that my friend Jesse gave me. Also, the guy behind keyboard IO, keyboard IO, um, who gave me the Atreus that he made. He didn't design it, but he did all the manufacturing on it. Twitch is pooping itself. That's unfortunate. Oh, thanks, Ains. I really appreciate that. I'm been, I'm glad you've been enjoying my my content here. Mm. I think you can make a water resistant keyboard. Um, if nothing else, you can just conformal coat the the circuit board and the electronics, which is uh, a fancy way of saying um, spray it with silicone or another waterproofing, but. Yeah, I don't know all of the details to that. I do know that there are water resistant keyboards. So. Yeah, solder therapy is good therapy. Um, we're gonna do the sockets next. And I have never done these before, so this is gonna be a little bit of a learning exercise. Yeah, let, um, let me pull up the instructions now. Let's do that pre-stream. 
just like last time. Okay. Hey, Nosh. Hey, John Grizzly. Welcome, welcome. Oh my gosh, Scott Dev, thank you for subscribing. For two months at tier three, that's awesome. Thank you. That's really generous. Glad to have you here. Hanson Handbrems, thank you for subscribing as well. I really appreciate it. I'm glad to have you guys be part of the, the Strange Parts community here. Thank you. Thank you for supporting it. These are not for the robots. This is just a, a keyboard kit. So we've been gradually soldering it. It's got LEDs all over it. And then we're going to add some keyboard switch sockets that the keyboard switches themselves will plug into. So we've got a bag of keyboard switches here as well. And we're, we're in the home stretch here. I think it is potentially possible to finish up on this stream. So let's see. Let me, let me uh, cut and paste the instructions here that I'm in case you want to follow along. This is what we're doing. I am down to the KL PCB socket section. So it says apply solder to the pads on both sides on the back. It is difficult to add it later, so please fill it up beforehand. And then. So it looks like they just go through and tin all of the pads and then you just melt the socket on. So these are the sockets here. These might be big enough. We don't have to use them. We'll see. We'll see. Okay. So these are the sockets. And I'm going to go on the back side, which is this side. And it looks like they just sit on there like Oh, I got them upside down. Ooh, they actually sit down in the sock, in the holes. So that'll be easy. Nice. Okay. So that'll be pretty straightforward. Um, see if my eyes can do that. I should be able to do that without microscopes. So. Yeah, let's see. All right. Uh... With this. question is, well, one, are we out of focus? I think we were a little bit out of focus. question is, do we want to switch to the macro lens? I don't know. It almost makes me want a third camera, which seems very extravagant. At least if it's going to be a third GH5, that's way extravagant. Um, yeah, the, the sockets actually fit into holes here, so I, I think they're going to line up nicely. I don't think we're going to have to worry too much about how things line up here. Um, well, let's go through and tin everything. I don't know. Oh, eh, T over PCBs. It's no big deal. As long as you don't lick the PCBs, it's all good. Um, what do folks think? You want to use the microscope? You want to see it up close? I feel like we should have a, a zoomed out view, though. So, I don't know. I can, uh... Um... I guess I could switch over to the, to the macro lens. I don't know. Go back and forth. Let's try some without the, without the microscope. Let's see how that feels. Alexa, turn on the soldering iron. Yeah, I usually, t I tend to do things through the microscope just because, I don't know, it's easier when you can see. I'm going to dump all these, all these suckets out at once. Get them out. There we go. Okay. Scope for the first couple, and then as more added, go back to the wide when more added to the boards. It's like people are, are suggesting the microscope. All right, we can do that. I don't actually have that much of a reference. 
Um, Alexa, turn on the microscope. Okay. Uh, let's recalibrate the microscope switcher. And turn it on. My oh so fancy switch. Uh, I, yes, I do have keycaps for it. This, someone sent me this kit, uh, from a friend. So these are the keycaps for it. They're kale, kale something, and then a bunch of Japanese. These are the keycaps here. So, this kit came from the, um, came from a retail store in Japan that I am blanking on the name on. Uh, the folks that made this, that did the manufacturing on this, I think. Um, and, uh, Jesse from Keyboardio picked it up in Japan and had it sitting on his shelf and I pinged him and I was like, hey, I want to try building a keyboard. Do you have anything you recommend? And he said, well, and I was just thinking I'd go buy it. He said, well, I actually have the perfect thing for you sitting on my shelf. So, yes, Yushikobo. That sounds right. Jolly Eskimo. So, yes. All right. So let's jump in here. Let me make sure the mic microscope's focused, which it's not. You can see that. Okay, that's reasonable ish. Oh, I moved my light around and it's reflecting. Move some of the studio lights around. They're reflecting weirdly in the eyepiece. Sorry. Um, okay. Dive into it. So first we're gonna tin all these up. Let's do one and just see how it goes. And then, and then we'll tin everything up. So make sure I'm not putting on too much or too little or whatever. That's not on. Alexa, turn on the soldering iron. Okay. She turned on the hot air instead, Ooh, which was doing its best to start a fire. Awesome. Oh my gosh, there's a hype train going and I didn't even know it. Sorry, I've been totally not paying attention. Boziv, thank you for subscribing for two months with Prime. That's awesome. Your vote is for the microscope. And uh, Fat32 did something with bits. Thank you for the bits. Where'd you go? Oh, I see. Yes, thank you. Okay, we will do the scope. Subnebula, thank you for the subscription with Prime. That is super helpful. If you don't already know, you can subscribe to the channel using your Amazon Prime subscription. You subscribe to one channel a month for free. Costs you no extra money and it helps me out for sure. Okay, here we go. So, I'm just gonna tin these up and then drop this in. <laughs> Sorry, I scrolled back. Oh, cheers, the vintage gamers. Thank you. Contributing to the hype train here. Excellent. Oh my gosh, Scave Rat! Thank you for the gift subs! That's amazing! If you were one of the people that Scave Rat gifted subs to, please thank them. That is very generous. Awesome! Merry Christmas, Scave Rat! Thank you! Thank you, thank you. Okay, let's see. So we're gonna heat this up. Yeah, I do want this iron to be a little hotter. I've got it at 280. I'd rather it be a fair bit hotter, like three, let's say 330. Because these these uh, contacts are actually kind of beefy. All right. and then... Now we don't need to be using the soldering, the microscope for this. It's 
It is a little bit overkill, but it just makes it easier to see stuff. Seeing stuff is great. All right, we got a, oh, we got a, a masked doctor emote. They, uh, do to the Vintage Gamers gift. Oh my gosh, another gifted sub. Thank you, the Vintage Gamers. That's awesome. Thank you, thank you. Oh, all right. So that worked pretty well. Um, that socket is... Here, I'll show, I'll show you again. That socket's pretty well in there. Pretty happy with that. All right, let's go uh, tin these pads up and solder the rest of them down. So... I think this is going to go pretty quick. You're going to build a keyboard tonight. If I've got anything to say about it. Maybe that's a little chip solder mask. <laughs> Thanks, the Vintage Gamers. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah, this uh, 6040 solder is a lot shinier than that 37 whatever, whatever. Just a little bit more lead. Makes things look pretty. That or it's just higher quality. I don't, I don't, I'm not totally certain of that. The labels look almost the same. Okay, I think that's it. Yes. Good. CJ1069, thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Timber, you can totally just solder at your kitchen table. You don't need a full workshop to solder. All right. Yeah, sometimes it's good to put things down so you don't burn the table. I'm, I'm somewhat careful, so I don't have any burn marks on this desk yet. You can put down even just cardboard is fine. You can get a work mat. I have that uh that blue silicone work mat for for some stuff. It's not great for hot air. Hot air makes them buckle. Yeah, it's easy to get wrapped around the axle on, you know, getting the perfect workspace set up. And I, I definitely had that happen to me a little bit here. And uh, you know, the reality is, you just dive into stuff. You don't, you don't tend to need a ton of space, particularly for soldering. What do they say? Perfect is the enemy of done. Oh, I guess that's fair enough, Timber. You already have a space out there. You, you just need to clean it out. All right! We got a level three hype train emote, which I can't even tell what it is, but... Looks like a wine glass with the moon in it. Thank you to everybody that contributed to that. It's 
exciting. Good way to burn your fingertips. Um, I didn't think it was super solder, uh, super frustrating to solder in the in the Chinese apartment. Um, really, the biggest frustration was the jackhammers. Jackhammers are pretty ubiquitous in China, and they reverberate the concrete. The buildings are all concrete, so the jackhammer noise reverberates up and down the building. And so they both will jackhammer out in the street when they're doing road work, which they replaced all of the water lines in the whole neighborhood while I was there. And they were using a big, like, you know, backhoe arm mounted jackhammer for that, which was really intense. Um, but also, they will use jackhammers or hammer drills in apartments to remove tile off the wall and walls and floors, and sometimes the ceiling. And um, yeah, I can go all day and go for 12 hours for a month. <laughs> and that will drive you insane. It's also really hard to film when they're jackhammers. Yeah, recording was an absolute nightmare. It, it, it was literally driving me insane. Um, I have some footage somewhere of me slowly going insane from the jackhammers. Um, and it would be totally unexpected. It was, I don't know, old is relative for Shenzhen. You know, nothing in Shenzhen is older than 30 years. Um, but for Shenzhen, it was kind of old. It was, I don't know, 10 or 20 years old. Which I know those numbers sound really insane to just about everybody else in the world, but they built a lot of stuff very, very quickly. And so, and they haven't done a lot of maintenance because sort of the feeling was like, well, we're going to build it and then we're going to replace it soon, you know, progress, progress, progress. So, um, so not everything was, was particularly well built, particularly early on. And so now they're tearing stuff down and rebuilding it, and renovating. Um, so yeah, there is a huge investment in public infrastructure in China. Um, it's it's really quite impressive. Like the the trains are phenomenal. Um, yeah, the trains are all like a lot of the train systems are all new. It's all high speed. Actually, here's an interesting anecdote. They built the rails. So the rails are the really expensive part about trains, right? Um, and they built the rails to run at I think 300 kilometers an hour. So the rails are just like laser straight. And, you know, very gentle curves and, you know, almost, you know, the rises are super gentle and everything. Um, because, well, so they built them at 300 kilometers an hour, but they're running the trains slower right now. Because if you run the trains at, you know, the full speed, and I think I've got these numbers right, um, wind resistance is, is a huge factor. And so it's, it's more expensive. And so they are right now running the trains slower, even though the rails are rated for much higher speeds. Um, to conserve electricity while the economy improves. And then as the economy improves, they will crank up that speed as the population can support higher ticket prices. So I thought that was pretty amazing. Yes, these are the sockets for the, um, for the keyboard uh, switches. So they're, they're just, here, we'll, we'll take a close look here. So. Yes. So that is a socket. And so the two pins of the switch go in here and here. And then this is what's soldered down to the, the border, these two legs. And we're actually soldering it down upside down. So it's going in that way. And then we will plug in the keyboard switches. which are like this here. And so those switches, these two legs here, will plug into the socket there. That's the plan anyway. So I'm just going through and popping these in. Good night, Hanson Handbrims. Thanks, thanks for tuning in.
I like the idea of these sockets because it means you can swap out different uh, switches for different feels. So. Gradually learning about this stuff. This one is not seen. So, um, there is there's a huge variety of uh, of keyboard. Ooh, I like that better. If we press the soldering iron in the middle, then it seats really well. So there's a huge variety of switches that have um, different take different amounts of force to push down on them, so they have uh, more or less strong springs. And then also, also they, um, actuate at different points. So, so, you know, you have to press them down different, different amounts for the, for the switch to recognize it as a key press. And then also, some are clicky, and there are various different kinds of clicky. And so it's a question of how do you want just the tactile feedback? Do you want to hear the sound? Or do you want no feedback at all? So I think there's there's holes in the board for the sockets to fit into. So I don't I don't think I am screwing this up too badly. Except no, I oh I see the silk screen doesn't match from top to bottom. But yeah, they're they're sitting in the holes. So I, I really don't think they're rotated at all. I think I am pretty well protected from screwing this up. But I appreciate the. Concern. I think we're good though. Yes, there is a tiny little OLED screen here sitting on top of a uh, Pro Micro Arduino. All right, I think we've used up all the switches we got out of the first batch. Let's see three, three, and four. Yes, the switches also have... I guess we could try inserting a switch here. Let's see what we're up to. Ooh, yep. Yep. Yeah, those are all, like, the alignment there is solid. We're not... There's no way for this thing to be misaligned. Really. All right. So if you don't know, the reason that they come packaged this way in this plastic tape is for pick-and-place pick and robots at, uh, at assembly factories to be able to pick these up and place them on the board. And so the little sprocket holes down here are for the machine to advance the tape through the machine, uh, through the feeder. And then this tape sits on top to hold them in until it gets peeled back by the feeder. So they peel off one at a time, and then they're picked up, we, uh, usually with a suction tip, and uh, placed on the board. But yours truly is just doing this by hand, the old fashioned way. And there, at least in smaller factories, there's still a lot of soldering done by hand, particularly for bigger parts like these. see lines of folks stuffing components in boards and then soldering them. Usually one person is stuffing and another person is soldering and then a third person cuts off the legs if they need to be trimmed. You know, you wouldn't trim these, but you know, if you were stuffing through hole capacitors or something, you would then trim those down. Yeah, 
And there are machines to do all of those things, but often, you know, if you're making small runs of something, you know, you're not making a hundred thousand. Um, it is, it takes too much time to calibrate all the equipment and it's really finicky. So, um, Kraz, this is, this is a kit. So, um, all the components came with it, but for other stuff, I order components from all sorts of places, uh, DigiKey, Mauser, um, AliExpress, Amazon, Adafruit, um, and then, uh, LTSC, which is another like DigiKey competitor, but in, in China. Um, they have great prices on stuff. I've been really impressed with LCSC. Um, easy to use website. Um, where else do I get stuff? Just a bunch of little suppliers as well. So, like I ordered some e-ink screens and those came from a little supplier in, in China. Um, Yannick, there is, or Janik, I don't know, might be getting your name wrong. Um, there is like a, uh, plexiglass acrylic sort of case deal here. So it's, it's kind of minimalist. It's got, got these acrylic pieces and then some, some PCB covers that go over the top, so. That will be the next step to figure out after we get these sockets in and the switches in place. So. I wonder if I should add a command to Nightbot, like exclamation point project to describe whatever the current project we're working on is. And then I can just make it part of my checklist when I start the stream to make sure to update it. I wonder if that would be helpful to people. Because I know a lot of people pop into the stream and they're like, ooh, what are we working on? And then we can put all the links in it and stuff so that it'd be easy for people to get, get up to speed with what we're, what we're up to. I don't mind mentioning it occasionally, but I don't want the whole stream to be me re-explaining what we're doing. reload the screen. I'm not seeing any requests again. I just want to make sure that nobody's getting rewards. Okay. Oh, nice, Yannick. Have you built this keyboard? Robolay, they absolutely do sell samples for keyboard keys. They, they sell like little, little grids of different keyboard switches that you can, you can test out. And I assume you mean switches, not keys. You can also, like, keycaps are a whole thing. You can spend a ridiculous amount of money on, like, handcrafted keycaps. You know, I don't know, you can spend, I don't know. I think it's pretty easy to spend, like, 30 bucks on an individual key, a single key. Um, now, most people aren't gonna do a full keyboard out of those. They'll do something like their escape key out of something that's, you know, hand sculpted that has a, a full little diorama inside it, but Still, you, you can spend real money on this stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay, Skate Rat, we'll add a command explaining the microscope camera control. Let me, let me write some of this down. Hang on, let me, uh... Trying this Atreus keyboard, and it's, it's it's sometimes challenging. Um, uh, just uh, let's see, Nightbot. Um, just me getting used to it. Uh, we're gonna do exclamation point. Project and I don't know. Probably should do one about the whole microscope, actually. Microscope and then maybe like man switcher. Okay. 
Cool. Sweet. Hmm, excuse me. We had a, um, we got a couple inches of snow here last night, um, which has made the whole place very beautiful. So I went for a drive today, this afternoon, and uh, drove up towards the Colorado border, and it was gorgeous. All the mesas and stuff were, you know, orange with sort of snow sprinkled on them. Really lovely. The sun was out, but like still a lot of sort of low-hanging clouds hanging off the mountains. Really gorgeous. Very, very pretty. I'm really happy with how this microscope switcher is working out. I hope it's a good experience for for the viewers here. I'm starting to try my hand at making keycaps. I actually have a couple here that I've been working on. I've been using um, UV Cure Resin for these. They didn't come out perfect, but Interesting experiments. Anyway, let me throw them under the microscope. So that was the first one. It didn't. I didn't fully fill in the bottom, so it doesn't actually fit on a on a key switch. But this is the one that was more successful. It, it's not fully trimmed up or anything, and it's got a bubble. But um, it probably needs to be sanded and polished. But it's pretty darn easy. I ordered some molds on Amazon, and then some UV cure resin, and then a UV light for doing nails, um, which is like 20 bucks or something. And uh, super, super fun, it was was very rewarding. So, yeah, um, came out came out really well, I'm quite pleased. So, I, you know, obviously you need some more refinement there, but you can embed all, you can embed it whatever you want. You put down a little bit of epoxy, cure it, and then put something in it, and then put more epoxy and cure it. Yeah, it's essentially a black light. Yeah. Idea. Okay. Oh, there's my last other socket here. Excuse me. Excuse me for one second. Um, piston in the chair, but it only happens sometimes. I don't know. I probably should order a new piston. Ooh, there it goes. Again. I found. I don't know. I don't know if this is just me inventing things, but it seems like if I rotate the wheels when it happens, then it stops happening. <laughs> should make some. You're gonna make some keycaps out of silicone. Weird out. I don't know who Foon is. Keyboard person? Yeah, Squid Frenzy! I'm excited to see how this turns out, too. I think it's going to be cool. I don't think this is going to be the last keyboard I build. For sure. Okay. Let's get rid of some of the stuff here. Detritus. Cumulating detritus. Uh oh. I lost him. Oh, I think he went. Where is he? I swept and mopped yesterday, which is a huge win in terms of finding things on the ground. I think, <laughs> I think I'm going to have to start taking off my outside boots at the door so I don't track all the mud in here. Cause it's starting to, the the mud here is, 
is clay and it's really, really, really fine dust once it dries and it just aerosolizes and gets all over everything. So I'm gonna have to start having shop shoes. Leave my big, big work boots outside or at the, at the door at least. So it turns out having big, you know, having clay dust all over your microscope and other equipment is great for it. Um, we've already flashed a firmware on here, I believe. So, I, I don't know, actually. Uh, we, yes, we are going to need to flash it. I either already have or I need to flash it again. Some combination of that. Let's not see it properly. There, now it's seated. It's sticking up. Okay. I got them all. It's looking pretty good. We should bring this camera in. I'm, I'm uncomfortable with how far away it is. I will post the link again to the GitHub page. Posted it at the beginning of the stream, but it's good to repost it again. This is what we're up to. All right, I think we're done with this one. I'm gonna set that aside. So now we can actually I can shut this off properly. Do the next one. Make sure we're on the back. Get on the chair, man. Okay, so we are going to tin all the pads again. Oh, thanks, DJ Marlis. missing there. Let's see those traces popping through. Should be like that. But it's not going to affect the functionality much. One of the challenges if you're making something like this 
where the end users see the circuit board is that a lot of circuit board houses are not used to that. They're used to circuit boards being something that only, you know, the person assembling it or repairing it is going to see. And so they may not have the same standards on how the board looks that you want. So it's, I think that's starting to change a lot, but it used to be an issue. Anakin Luke, yeah, I think this is gonna be a really cool keyboard. Now, this this key this microscope's not for Louis, from Lewis Rossman. This is a uh, a microscope from my microscope vendor in Shenzhen, a lady named uh, Sumei in the markets, and um, she's been hooking me up with microscopes for a couple years now. Found her in person, and yeah, we've become good friends. I did a did a video about. Um, a very similar microscope. This is a little bit of an upgraded version from the one that I had in China, but um, the one I had in China was about 300 bucks for everything included. This one's a little bit upgraded. It's got a bit of a nicer camera and a, and a heftier stand on it, but uh, it's got the boom arm stand, which is a little bit easier to work with. Yeah. Oh yeah, you've seen the video, awesome. What, what I mean by the end user sees it is it's it's not inside a plastic case, right? We, we're, you know, the the person that's buying the product either is assembling it themselves or there's no case on it. This chair is driving me nuts. Um, hand sanitizer. I definitely think you could reflow these. Um, I am not going to. Um, I, I think these are designed to be reflowed. I think you would have to worry. You know, you'd have to be pretty particular about your reflow temperatures um, so you don't melt all the plastic in them. But yes, I, I would be highly surprised to hear that they weren't reflowable. Pretty much nothing is, is not reflowable these days. Yeah, I mean, stuff with a bunch of plastic like this, it's definitely a worry to, to melt it in your reflow oven, but that's not... It's not gonna stop you, it's just gonna mean you're gonna have to be careful. And I, I bet these come with, I bet often, and I, I don't know about these switches, but um, often a part, like let's say you've got like these LEDs that we're using, they will, the data sheet will actually include what the allowable temperatures and the temperature curve for reflowing is. They'll have a recommended temperature curve, so, um, to make sure that they don't, uh, they don't melt. Hmm. I'm kind of mellow today. I uh, didn't sleep very well last night, so. I'm a little low. It's got me a little low energy here. Which means we're having a mellow stream, chill stream. Yes, and the temperature curve for the LEDs might be different than the sockets. That is totally possible. Absolutely. Um, if you watch the YouTube video I did about the circuit board assembly factory, they had a very cool data logger that was uh, heat resistant, that it was in like a fiberglass insulation shell, and they would send it through the reflow oven to actually measure the reflow curve, measure, measure the temperature curves. Um, it had a bunch of thermal couples sticking out of it. And they would actually put the thermocouples on the circuit board that they were going to reflow because they wanted to make sure that they understood the heat dissipation on the board, which I thought was pretty impressive. I would I would have assumed you didn't dial in your reflow oven based on the actual board you were running. I just assumed you would do it on the air temperature. So. Yeah, Bluebird, we're listening to some chill music here, some chill beats. What is this right now? To. We are listening to Believe Me When I Say It by Matt Large.
Oh yeah, sorry, Afra. I, I didn't see your question, but um, DJ Marlis has it pretty well summed up, I think. And instead is most of what we've been working on. I think I've got a couple things in the work in the sitting in the wings, but I haven't unveiled them yet. I mean, I'm one thing that I have talked about is I am working on a uh, video uh, tour of the shop, which is silly. It's going to take me an afternoon to shoot it at most, probably a couple hours if I was to shoot it. But I just keep getting stymied in terms of actually doing it. So I don't like to shoot when I'm sleep deprived because it really shows on camera. And then I get a whole bunch of comments on YouTube. They're like, why do you look so tired? Um, and, and videos are videos are forever. So, um, so I was going to shoot it today, but that didn't happen. I didn't sleep well. Um, so hopefully tomorrow. And then I was going to shoot it yesterday, but I ended up spending most of the time cleaning the shop and mopping the floor. I didn't want to do a shop tour with a super dirty floor. It was gross. Super gross. So. Um. Anyway, the minutia of being a YouTuber. Mundane minutia. I have a way cleaner shop and work environment than I would if I was not shooting and streaming and stuff. This would be much more of a pigsty. You know, it comes with benefits. I break less stuff, I lose less stuff. So that's worth it. Yeah. I didn't used to be on the cleaning and organizing bandwagon. I am increasingly so, particularly after doing the YouTube thing. Yeah, Squid Frenzy, we're cranking through these. You're going pretty quick. It's not, not super difficult. And honestly, like I don't really need to use the microscope, but just I don't know. it allows you all to see what's going on. It allows me to really see very clearly what um, what's happening with solder joints and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. Just more enjoyable, I think. Tell you what, though, let's play around with it. Let's shoot at an angle, because this this boom arm is quite adjustable. I was looking for cool shots, so let's do that. Can I do this? I'm gonna have to look my there. Let's get in focus. Ooh, this might be awkward. <laughs> But it's kind of cool to be able to look at it from the side. That's totally interesting on camera. Yeah. Hand sanitizer. This is a um, microscope from Min's Vision. It's a small microscope shop in the markets in Shenzhen. So it's not an Amscope. It's much cheaper than an Amscope. Um, but I think similar quality based on people who have AMScopes or have experience in AMScopes. That's what I've heard anyway. I've not seen an AMScope before. But I think AMScope is just a, a relabeling of a Chinese. And I, the color is different because it's a little bit too dark. So if I crank up the microscope, light it will be a little bit clearer but then the overhead light the overhead camera gets blown out that's the problem so it's a matter of sort of balancing the two of those it turns a little purple when it's dark and i don't quite know why <laughs> yeah dj marles i um yeah i would like to do a, a vacuum robot i that is still sort of an idea um an idea slap a joke. I think one of the next things I want to do to the robot, one of the next big things I want to do to the robot anyway, is um, get it working on its own Twitch channel where you can control it from the channel itself, like while you're watching 
stream, not via chat, but actually via like a proper extension overlay. And I, I took a bit of a look at the um, Twitch extension docs and, um, and I think what I, what I have in mind is, is very doable. So, so but it's going to be some work. So it's going to be a decent amount of code because we're going to have to replace a lot of the things that we were getting for free with Remo TV. Um, but there are a bunch of things that Remo TV does that we just don't care about. So yeah. yes, Twitch plays cleaning for sure. <laughs> BW Merlin. Yes. Um, Anna Kim Luke. Um, yes. Uh, YouTube and streaming is my day job and has been, um, gosh, I don't know, three plus years now, something like that. I should actually figure out how long it's been. Time is, is really blurry this year. But yeah. Oh, thanks, Krillin. Yeah, I'm enjoying. I'm glad you're enjoying the robot. I think I think it's something we'll continue to work on here, and maybe maybe we'll build some friends for it at some point. Um, there definitely has been a desire for folks to have it go outside, and I'm not sure that this robot is particularly well suited to being outside. But maybe another one would be. You know, if we design something with that in mind, um, I'm just worried. There's so much like uh, mud and snow right now and stuff. I don't think this robot with its mechanum wheels would fare particularly well in that, but we could certainly think about, you know, wheeled platforms that would do better in that environment. Um, and that might be fun. I'll have to, I'll have to sort of check with the tribe and see what, check with the governor at least and sort of see what his feelings about an internet controlled robot roaming around on its own. I'd have to be careful. There are, there are definitely some religiously, like religious cultural sensitive sites not that far from here. So we'll have to put some bounds on it. You know, the robot can't go explore the Kibas, for instance. Um, that is not okay. Um, the Kibas are, are in active use for religious ceremonies and I'm not allowed over there. So um, there's no reason that the robot would ever be. So yeah, I think the governor has offered to let me, to show me around like the tops of them, but I would never be allowed to come in. Um, and you don't, certainly don't want the robot falling down in it. That would be a huge offense. So. And there's like a church and stuff. We'll need to be sensitive there. But not to mention, you know, there are lakes and canals to fall in and sort of stuff like that. Um, I don't know about a Google outage today. I know that there was a Google outage a week or two ago. I'm assuming that's what you're talking about, Minerva. Um, no, that, I mean, that doesn't really affect me. Like, if YouTube goes down for a little while, yes, it affects everybody, but it's kind of just an act of, a force of nature and not a big deal. Um, light goes on. Um, Escape Rat, yes, sort of in with restrictions. We could, yes, we can. I can show you a bit more around the reservation. And it probably would be a video that would be like on the second channel, maybe. Um, the governor has has offered that, has offered to show me around, um, and I have yet to fully take him up on it. But uh, yeah, it is something I would like to do. Um, we just need to be sensitive to, you know, there's a graveyard, and you know, there's there's just things that we need to be sensitive about, mindful of. So, and I'm. You know, for as long as I have been here, I am still an outsider. Um, yeah, I need to be careful. I'm not offending anybody more than I already have. Anyway, not everybody 100% likes me here. But most most people are cool. Oh yeah, the Google outage two weeks ago brought some concern for smart home. Yeah, no, it hasn't been a big deal. Hand sanitizer, thank you for subscribing. Welcome to the Strange Parts family. You're now a stranger. I hope you're okay with that. I think, folks, I think we're done. I think I just did my last socket. It's a little bit overwhelming to look at this and see if all the holes are filled, but I think they are. 
I don't see any more silk screen on this, on this side of things, so I think we're good. So, yes, there is going to be a second channel. Bluebird, thank you for the hydration reminder. Cheers. There will be a second channel. Yeah, that went pretty quickly. Um, despite me talking the whole time. Okay. What do we do now? Did all the sockets. Um, soldering is now complete. Cool. Okay, we do plates and switches. Let's get those out. This is exciting. Hector HSC, I mostly learned this stuff on my own. Um, I've been interested in electronics and and making stuff and programming since I was little. Since I was, I don't know, in elementary school probably. Um, built my first robot when I was in elementary school and I learned to solder and I learned some basic electronics. And then, um, so yeah, most, most of what I know is self-taught. Um, Hang on, let me reset cameras, and then I'll finish that thought. So most of what I know is, is self-taught. Um, however, I did also go to school for computer science. And so that is where some of my software engineering knowledge comes from. And in a past life, I was a, a professional software engineer. I worked at places like Google and some, some other startups, successful startups. But, um, yeah, now I make stuff. I make stuff and tell stories about how stuff is made. Which is quite fun. I really enjoy it. I enjoy the storytelling part. So, an autodact, an autodactyle. I've not heard that before. I've heard autodidact. Oh, Krillin, I'm glad you've been enjoying this project. Um, yeah, I've been really enjoying it too. It's, it's I don't know, building keyboards feels very chill. Okay, so we're gonna very carefully peel these off and then try not to scratch them before we get them all together. This is the, the acrylic for the base. So yeah, I, I, I do tend to learn really well on my own um, and learn from, from my interests. So there's the corn logo engraved in. That's cool. Um, and a lot of the engineers that I know, both software and hardware, tend to be autodidacts and learn well from their interests. I think that's fairly key to being successful. Um, Shemizudo, I didn't buy it. Um, Jesse at Keyboardio um, bought it and lent it to me <laughs> under the Mia, understanding that I will give it back to him when I am done assembling it and playing with it. Um, and he bought it at a retail store in Japan that I still can't remember the name of. Somebody in chat mentioned it. It starts with a Y, but there's a retail keyboard shop that I believe did the manufacturing on these keyboards. So, all right, there are our two bases. So, how does this work? Let's see, let's get these right side up. And that goes like that. It goes like that. Alexa, turn off the microscope. Okay. Alexa, turn off the soldering iron. Okay. So, does this go like this? Something like that? Ooh, we're gonna have to pick out the... Uh, Cover tape is still attached on the Try not to scratch him. Put a little bit of 
description. There's a better way to lift that off. Maybe just with my fingernail. Yeah, that works better. Less, less scratching. Okay. Um, so like so. This goes like that. Okay. Now it matches the pictures. Well, hand sanitizer, the problem with me not using IoT control for the soldering irons is that then I run the risk of forgetting to turn them off. And right now I have a command that, a voice command that just shuts everything off in the shop when I leave, so. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, DJ Marlis. I appreciate it. <laughs> it's like me having long arms. I don't quite see that, but okay. This All right. So we're gonna use some spacers. Oh, we've got there's more parts here. Two more pieces of acrylic. Here, and let me get the hardware bag out. Actually, let me find a little tray for all these. the big spacers for the OLEDs. And... Let's just go. This is light on instructions. It's like, we assume I know what I'm doing. It's not necessarily a good assumption. I think I'm gonna put the PCB onto the back planes first. Are you supposed to do logo up? Yeah, logo up. Okay. All right, we need to find my iFixit kit here. I did order some single-purpose screwdrivers, uh, like iPhone screwdrivers, but they have not arrived yet. I had a very hard time convincing the Chinese phone repair supply, online supply shop, to send to my address. They were very, very concerned because the address I gave them didn't validate properly in DHL. So I'm way out in the sticks. And, um, so anyway, it was like a week of, of going back and forth, which drove me nuts. Okay. I really like my TS-80P, which is the smaller version of the TS-100 and is USB-C. And, uh, I really dig it. I was, I, we did part of this project with it, I think. Anyway, I'll just pop it out real quick. Let's show you all. You should, if you're considering getting a TS-100, you should consider getting this instead. It's much nicer to hold and um, yeah, still pretty, pretty beefy. So, anyway, and it's same price, same rough price point. Similar price point. I have my uh, my nice Heiko, which I, I use you know most of the time. But... Yeah. yeah, quite smooth. I mean, yeah, reship services have their own problems. This is this is a company that 
ships to the west. So, it's, and like, has English-speaking customer support and all that, so. I'm already paying the markup. <laughs> it's not a, it's not a, you know, China to China company, like a lot of the smaller guys. Yeah, and when you're dealing with a company like that, then it's, they're usually companies are set up either to sell to the West or to China. And yeah, often you have to use a different website. If, if they're set up to do both, you have to use a different website and you have to pay an RMB and it's like a whole thing. So. Uh, that was a TS-80P, which is the new upgraded version of the TS-80. So. Yeah, and I believe the TS-100 is not USB-C, right? It's it's like a barrel jack, 12 volt or something like that. Oh, screw. Well, hopefully there are extras. Fine. Yeah, it's just a barrel jack, yeah. And it's like 12 volts. And so there's like a whole, like, I don't know. It's it's quite cool to have a soldering iron that is just USB-C. It's USB-C PD power delivery. So it's a little bit finicky on what it'll work with, but I like the idea of it being something that I can, I mean, I can run it off a, a good USB, USB-C power brick. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, and it's like hand sanitizer. It's it's a good soldering iron as well. It's not just a dinky one. It looks small, but it's it's it packs a punch. Um, it's temperature controlled. It's firmware upgradable um, and like hackable. It has an accelerometer in it, so it can sense when you pick it up. So it can actually decrease its heat when it's sitting there. I think it can even shut itself off. So. Uh, Kali Commander, I think that's true for the TS... I think that is true. I think the TS-100 is higher wattage, but this one is still pretty hefty. I wish I knew what the difference between the TS-80... So this is 30 watts, which is plenty for the stuff I do. Um, I think the TS-80 was only 15. So... But someone feel free to correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. Man, this thing picks up dust like nobody's business. Got that nice static charge on it. Um, so that's gonna then sit on top, like so. up a little bit so they float around in the holes. There we go. Tighten everything back up right at the end. Okay. So that sits like that. I want to see if I can try and get this clean before we... Yeah, it scratches it. Um, let's see. Let me get some lint-free wipes here. Maybe some alcohol. Let's see if I can get this clean. At least on the middle layer, so that when you look at it, you don't see dust on the other side.
Oh, jeez. Lost another standoff. Dang it. Found it. Yeah. Okay, that's as good as I'm gonna get it. I'm not going to worry too much about the bottom of this being dirty. So we can fix that later. Just trying to get the top as clean as I can. Okay. Look, you should be doing this with white gloves. Alright. So now... Switches in after. That sits there. What does this go over the switches? Nope. We're doing here. Well, these these switches actually seat in the. seat in there. So do you seat the switches first and then put it in? I think you probably do both at the same time, that's my guess. What does it say? It doesn't say a lot. Try screwing this down and then seating all the switches. I don't really know. My order of operations of this here. You two different like screws? What the heck? I feel like I'm missing the right screws. Don't feel long enough. No, well, they should be. It's fine. That goes. Okay. Yes. All right. Let's break this. Oops. Okay. 
So the if you guys are still talking about the US uh the TS eighty P, it comes with its own cable, for better or worse. Um, which is actually a nice soft silicone USB C cable. Yeah, Bluebird, I did drop a screw. I'm hoping I don't need it. <laughs> hoping I have extras. If not, I'll go look for it. I'm kind of. Sometimes it's not worth hunting them down, if you know what I mean. Okay, let's see if we can actually get these sockets in with this screwed together. Otherwise, I'm gonna screw this. <laughs> hey, you can go look for it with the bot. Yeah. Kind of enjoying the quietness right now without the bot. Good keyboard streams. But uh, maybe later. We'll get the bot up and running. I have my plans. Skipping audio for you, huh? Everything's looking good on my end. It might be a Twitch side thing. It's in my hair. Stick. Put some uh, keyboard switches in here. Am I going to hell if I don't like take these apart and lubricate each one? No, that's not going to work like that. How are you supposed to put these in here? Doesn't just pop in. I thought it would. Yeah, Gabe, part of the problem is that I don't know about these. I think these are fine, but the screws that I'm stocking in the shop, sort of my standard inventory, are all stainless. <laughs> and so it means that I can't pick them up with a magnet. Because um, they're not Paris. So one of the downsides of stocking stainless, but then I don't have to worry about stuff rusting. So that's kind of worth it. All right, let's pull these out. Is there a standard way to do this? And I'm I'm just keyboard noob. I mean, I am a keyboard noob. That is that is true. Am I supposed to stick them all in the top plate first? Yes, Boxy. Oh, thanks, G. DeLuca. Yes, I'm hanging in there. This is one heck of a year, but making it through. Honestly, live streaming has helped a lot with that. Keep my spirits up. How? Yeah. I don't know how to get these switches in. into the top plate because they've got you gotta have a little bit of space to seat the uh the clips here so i wonder if you're supposed to put them all into the top plate first and then seat them down into the sockets it seems like it's gonna be hard let's try that stick a switch in each corner okay can do that Yeah, that, I, I suspect it's a lack of transcoding on Twitch's end. Hopefully, next Monday, I'm gonna reapply for Twitch Partner. They told me to come back in three to four weeks because they wanted to see if my trajectory continued, which it has, so I'm not super worried that I'll be rejected again, but I've been waiting. So making sure I'm keeping the, the metrics up We've been doing good on. We've been having plenty of people in here. We gotta have at least 75 people on average over a month period. And then I've got to stream 12 days for at least 25 hours. So making sure I hit all my numbers there. And uh, so that's not a corn. And um, hopefully we'll get Twitch Partner, which I think the biggest impact immediately will be they will always have a transcoder running so that you can watch at other resolutions. 
um, because I've I've worked very hard to make the stream look really good, but not everybody has the bandwidth or the computer to uh, to watch it at 1080p, you know, 6,000 kilobit stream. So I am sympathetic to that, and yet I don't want to degrade the quality for those that can watch it at those rates. So got me a little bit in between a rock and a hard place right now. But I think we'll we'll get that sorted here. Switch partnership shortly. What's going on in this corner? Can't, can't quite see this last one. Well, sheesh. Okay. Okay, that, that those are all seated now. Cool. Yeah, gaming W geezers, I uh there are some restrictions. I'm not quite sure what they are. I should go look at that. Uh, I know that I can't Already, I can't re-upload, or I can't upload things that I streamed on Twitch to YouTube for 24 hours. It's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, I might not be able to stream on both. I, I'll need to figure that out. Honestly, I'm really enjoying Twitch, so... Um, and I, I've heard really mixed things about streaming on YouTube. And I, I've just not fully gotten into it. Part of it was I didn't really know how to stream. It's a, it's a different skill set than making videos. And so I feel like I'm, I'm starting to figure it out, but um, it's, it's got a bit of a learning curve. Um, so. Okay, these are starting to start to work. Yeah, Skate Brown, I'm, I'm kind of the same opinion. I don't really watch live streams on YouTube, you know, it's, it's, it really is like, I think it's partly people's expectations, right? People expect YouTube to be a place that they watch recorded content, but also like the platform was made for, for recorded content, you know, and, um, and Twitch really was built from the, the ground up for streaming. And, you know, I would say that one of the weaknesses, at least for strange parts on, on Twitter, but I would say, or on Twitch, but, but Twitch in general is that it is still so gaming centric. And so I think Twitch is kind of entering a renaissance where there's going to be a lot more content that's not games, um, but it's still sort of, you can very much feel the gaming roots um, of Twitch sort of throughout the platform in many ways. So it's, that makes it a little challenging for those of us that are not live streaming games. Yeah, thanks, Minerva. Yeah, there's a lot of really cool technical folks and makers and stuff on, on Twitch. I've been really impressed by, by some of the people. I think the biggest thing right now is just to grow the to grow the overall audience for this type of content, right? There are plenty of people that want to watch it, but they're not all coming to, to Twitch to watch it right now. So, um, so I'm definitely viewing it as a sort of an all boats rise together situation right now, you know, and so that's nice because it because it really means we don't need to compete with each other as as streamers and creators on Twitch. Um, it really behooves all of us to just um, increase the number of people on the platform and make sure that people have a good time and discover other other streamers so they stick around and they keep coming back and stuff. So um, so I've been trying to do my part to support other people where I can and um, you know one of the ways I do that is is making sure to raid another channel at the end of a stream if I can. So that people can meet other streamers and yeah, we kind of cross pollinate. So I don't know, Kali Commander. I'll have to look into that. It's possible he's not a Twitch partner. That that Linus, I should mention who I'm talking about. Linus Tech Tips. It's possible they're not a Twitch partner. I suspect they are. Um, I'll have to look into it. It may be that they got a you know exception or something. I don't know. Yeah, YouTube's definitely the place to be for, for you know, producing edited videos for sure. 
Twitch is not, not designed for that. And nobody really thinks of Twitch as a place to do that. I mean, people watch VODs, but you know, it's not really a place you come to watch a video. I think maybe there's a way to do it. I'm not sure. Don't they have like some sort of premieres type feature? Oh, that's interesting, DJ Marlis, that they just don't care if they get banned. <laughs> that's a, a bold move. But I suppose fits with Linus's personality. Um, I think I think he's right. I think Twitch would be crazy to try and pull that. But you know, they've done some other whack stuff. They you know, the way they treated Ninja moving off the platform was pretty scummy in my opinion. Um, Gaming W Geezers, no, I don't think I'll be editing this build for the main channel. I, I am working on some other projects for the main channel, and some of that is being live streamed, like the USB-C iPhone project. Um, I've been live streaming portions of that, but, um, and then that will be edited, but, but it's not really the live stream content. You know, I'm like recording separately on the cameras while I'm live streaming. So it's sort of, it's sort of like coming behind the scenes with me while I'm shooting on those, but. Now this this isn't this isn't sort of strange parts main channel content here. This is just just for the live stream. Um, I think I am gonna put together or I am gonna put together a separate YouTube channel that has the uh, recordings of the live streams in it, um, so that people on YouTube can can come watch those. Um, uh, we've got uh, Obsidian is is volunteering his time to. Um, go through every single stream. Sometimes he's able to watch them, but he's in Europe somewhere. So I don't think he's in here right now. Um, but he goes through every every stream in VOD and does a summary on Discord. And, um, and so we're going to use some of those summaries to boil them down into chapter titles for the YouTube videos, which I'm excited about. Yeah, for the streams. So hopefully they'll be well annotated yeah yeah obsidian's really doing some pretty impressive work yeah dj marlis that that makes sense that ltt isn't really making any money on twitch i mean i don't i don't think they're really making that much money from the wan show in general but maybe they are maybe they're putting sponsors on it i think it's it's mostly just community building for them audience building is my guess. Although I don't know, they just launched like their new mouse pad on on Wancho, so yeah. I'm just using this plastic spudger to sort of push the uh keyboard switches in. It seems to be working. Just push the little plastic tabs in. Oh yeah, I'll have to check that out, the flat fat the fat plum. Um check out what my restrictions are there. If that's the case, I might think twice about partner, but I've heard it's very worth it, and I don't, I don't know, I don't have a ton of aspirations to stream on YouTube, so I think Twitch is a better platform for streaming, and it's nice to sort of diversify the audience, you know, it's, it, it, it is nerve-wracking to have all your eggs in the YouTube basket in terms of staying in touch with all of you. Um, YouTube is very sort of algorithm-specific, dependent, and it is very easy, even with even subscribers, even who have the bell turned on, you're not guaranteed to be able to reach them. And that sucks, so. Oh, you can't multi-stream as an affiliate either. Oh, that's interesting. I should check next time they do the WAN show if you can, if they have transcoding or not. Okay. 
got all the switches in. Let's go ahead and put these screws back on. This is starting to look like a keyboard, folks. Look at that. So I should get it more in frame. I did have a bad experience with YouTube premieres. I used them right after they came out and um, it just totally tanked the video. And people were super angry because they were getting notifications for things they couldn't watch. And it was frustrating because I, I had directly reached out to my YouTube rep and I was like, hey, should I use this? Is this feature like good to go? Any tips on how to do this? And he was like, oh yeah, I, as far as I know, it's good to go, go for it. And then it was a total disaster. And so the only way I saved the video um, was by making like an apology video, basically just stating my frustration with YouTube premieres and that video got picked up and then that drove traffic back to the original video and it kind of worked out in the end. But it sucked because it was a big long project. It was something I spent like a month on. And um, um, it sucks to spend a whole bunch of time on something and then nobody watches it because, not because they're not interested in it, but just the algorithm buries it, so. YouTube looked into it, the, the premieres team looked into it and, uh, and they were like, oh, it's because your video isn't very interesting. And I was like, uh, I don't, I don't buy that, but okay. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. YouTube premieres, YouTube premieres could be cool, but it's, um, there, there are some problematic things. I think they've made some tweaks to them, but I, I don't know that I'll ever try them again. It's just not worth it to me. Not, not with the, you know, if I was making four videos a week, um, my appetite for trying stuff like that would be higher, but because I spend so long on each video, like it, there's a lot more pressure for each one to do well. So, you know, from the perspective of sponsors and just the audience, and I don't know, my own expectations, the overall health of the channel and the company, like, yeah, it's, it's bad when videos really tank. Um, it really sucks. Okay, that's cleanish. Let's put the standoffs on it. Yeah, let's get this stuff out of the way. Adjust the camera a bit. Tad a smidge. Jorand, I don't know exactly what keycaps I have. This is a kit that a friend sent me. I, they're kale, like low profile keycaps. They look like this. But the label is in Japanese, so I don't know exactly what they are. Yeah, Gaming W Geezers, we are we're doing our best on the on the moderation side of things to sort of get prepared for a large influx of people. I am going to announce Twitch on my next YouTube video. It'll be coming out soon. Um, and that will, yeah, that will lead to a lot of people coming into Twitch and we want to make sure that that's a positive experience for everybody. So working on it. Getting, getting bots set up for dealing with things and just getting clear on what our approach to moderation is and stuff like that. So it's it's a little bit tricky because it's been so chill so far. I, I think I can count the number of people we've had to ban on one hand um, and the amount of time we've had to step in is just very minimal. So it's uh, we haven't had a lot of practice. Um, it's not to say you should be a jerk in chat. Um, it's just to say like, it's hard to plan for sort of big bang events. It's, it's easier to plan for sort of 
organic growth over time. And um, for better or worse, and mostly for the better, that's just not the way a lot of things happen with strange parts. You know, from the beginning, like that first video went so viral that I haven't really had a, you know, it's been actually really nice to have Twitch grow organically over the past month or two here. Um, Cause I haven't had that experience on YouTube. <laughs> and so I had to do a lot of, a lot of learning very quickly on YouTube to deal with things that, you know, most people hit, you know, after years, you know, they hit the first time after years. I got my first copyright strike on that video. I, you know, I dealt with reporters blackmailing me or not, not blackmailing me, but trying to trick me into stuff. I, um, I mean, I had, did my first television interviews, you know, it was, uh, it was pretty wild. So it's not a complaint. It's just, it leads to uh, an interesting learning curve. So, I don't think, I don't think Twitch, announcing Twitch on YouTube is going to be quite that explosive, but it, that first stream should be, should be a little wild. Yeah, I, I, I hope it stays chill too. Um, I, uh, I have high hopes. I guess we did all the keycaps with this off. Okay, so let's do the corners first. I don't know, Minerva. There's like, there's, there's a few big folks, big tech folks on Twitch already. Um, you know, obviously LTT, which we were talking about earlier, um, but also like um, Barnacles, which I guess, I don't know, he's doing a lot of like political content now, but he's definitely like part of that tech crowd. Um, and then there's some reasonably large keyboard guys um, doing keyboard content. So. I don't think I'm going to be, you know, far and away the biggest. Yeah, it's it's cold here. <laughs> so I'm not really looking forward to driving back up to the house. It was one degree Fahrenheit the other night. Just too cold. Even in the teens, it's too cold for me. Um, Hammercam.com, I, um, do I have any DIYers that I enjoy following on Twitch or YouTube? Um, the number one person that I really have been enjoying is, uh, is Adam Savage on Tested. Um, and he's, he's, I don't, He's on YouTube only. They they have done some live streams there, but I don't think they've been doing anything on Twitch. Um, but I, I he's part of the inspiration. His tested content in particular, but also Mythbusters, he is a big part of the inspiration that I had for starting Strange Parts. So I just really enjoy him as a person and personality, but also the way they produce content. So, hugely inspired by them. Um, who else have I been watching recently? Um, I think oh, I've been really into. I've been watching. Oh, what the heck is his name? There's a guy with a, a a young guy with a sawmill. I can't think of the name of the channel right now. Um, I think it's just his name. His name escapes me. But I've been really enjoying that. Yeah, Adam's been producing a ton of content. I am super impressed. He's just been shooting by himself with an iPhone in his shop and just cranking it out. He's shooting like five videos a day some days. 
Uh, I wish I had that kind of fluidity and productivity in terms of shooting. I am much more slow and cautious. And I also like, I don't know, the cameras that I am using are, <laughs> take more work. They yield a nicer result, but Adam's, yeah. Adam's a beast, particularly when he's stuck indoors and can't do his all of his other commitments because of COVID. It's quite awesome to watch. Yes, Matthew Cremona, you hit hit it on the head, Hammercon. Hammer Cam, sorry. Um, Matthew Cremona. Um, definitely worth checking out if you if sawing big giant logs in your backyard sounds interesting. He's got a good personality as well. Yes, that I remember him talking about that skate rat that, that he tried they sent him a proper camera and he was like, I don't want to learn how to do this, and it's too much work. It, it honestly makes me consider shooting at least some of my stuff on my iPhone because um, the iPhone cameras are pretty darn good and I don't know, there's something to be said for just breezing through shooting. So, and there's some pretty good, like you can buy some pretty good apps for the iPhone. Uh, like, what am I using? There's a, there's, they're not super cheap. They, they might be 10 or 20 bucks for some of them. But uh, what's this one? I know what it is. A label on it because it's down at the bottom. Um, what is it? It's like ProCam or something. Let's see if it's got an about information. Support page. It is Filmic Pro. So there are Filmic Pro is one. There are a couple others that are like they have a lot of very pro features, like false color and and focus peaking and things like that directly on your iPhone. So um, they can do you know flat log format for for getting it you know all of the color data you can out of it for color grading later. And you can Filmic Pro. You can hook up a remote using a second iPhone, so you can have a remote screen to watch. You know, if you can't either can't get to it or you need a second person to be able to see it. So there's, there's lots of good options there. Yeah, filming has been used in Hollywood productions. I absolutely believe that. So I use that stuff. I use phones a lot. I use my phone a lot in China when I'm shooting in the markets. Um, it's, it's just a lot easier than bringing a big camera around. It, Big cameras attract attention and cause all sorts of problems. So it's much easier to shoot on a phone. People don't get freaked out. Um, and I can get, get plenty good um, quality out of it. Um, but I have, it has been an ongoing reason to always have the latest phone. This is an 11. I haven't gotten a 12 yet, but the, you know, one of the major ways that the Phones have been improving from generation to generation is in cameras, so it's been worth it to me to, to stay, you know, on pretty much the latest version of the iPhone because of that. Which is not cheap. <laughs> and, and I always want to get the, like, I always need to get the Max, because that's always got the best cameras, and then I want to get one that has, that's maxed out in terms of uh, storage, because shooting, you know, 4K video eats up space like nobody's business, so. Yeah, I haven't. I don't really know what I would do. I, the 
kinds of things that I would want to fix about the GH5s that I'm using are um, are stuff that Panasonic has been struggling with, like better autofocus. And so it's not something that's very likely that I will make any improvements upon um, if they've got a team of engineers working on it. You know, I, it's unlikely that I'm going to bust out a quick fix. But, uh, back when I was shooting on a little RX100, which is a little point and shoot, I really wanted a headphone or a microphone jack on it so I could run an external microphone. Uh, that was a little bit more feasible a hack, but I'm less invested in that camera at this point. An alien in the workshop. That sounds dangerous. Okay. Uh, we need to mount this on here. And we're pretty darn close. I need. To, I have some covers to mount over the OLED screens. We're just about there. This is exciting. I am gonna. I am gonna have to re wrap up by ten. So in, in a little under forty minutes at the most, the Pueblo here is still under um, curfew. So I gotta be in the house by ten. That's just to prevent people from getting up to shenanigans, COVID spreading shenanigans. So, don't want to be fined or frowned upon. Which, honestly, I think the frowning upon would be worse than the fine. Go in there. What's going on here? You're sitting slightly weird. The legs here are a little bit long. Ears. Just sort of causing that standoff to sit weird. So close. Yeah, I don't know. It's I'm just an outsider gaming W geezers, so it's it happens. It happens anytime you go to a different culture, you know. So not everybody's gonna like you, and that's okay. <laughs> Ooh, but it's not many people. It's it's only. I've only gotten shit from one or two people. So. All right. So this, these go here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I got ahead of myself. I've got to take, i got to put the standoffs on first. Take these screws off. Um, Skate Rat, a couple hundred people live here, live on the reservation, and uh, the, the total tribal enrollment is 300-something, but not everybody lives within the Pueblo, so some people live on the town just on the other side of the little hill here, um, and some people live, you know, like down in Santa Fe or Albuquerque or something down the mountain, so. Ooh. So it's, you know, it's a pretty small community, and yeah. there's pros and cons. But I'm, you know, I'm pretty impressed with how they've handled COVID and how they take care of people here. It's definitely a tight-knit community. 
it's it's a little bit shame that I'm spending so long here and like so many things are are not happening. You know, all of the dances and and ceremonies are called off right now, have been for the whole year, and um, like uh, people aren't really able to socialize very much. So. Yeah. Okay, so. I put these standoffs, these holes here. Look, like you guys are discussing some hardcore Game Boy modifications. Nosh, next time you go to Tokyo, you're going to have to check out that shop that had all the crazy game console modifications that that uh John and I found in uh in the video we did together. That guy is super cool. I'm I'm not of I'm not a Native American. I'm I'm staying with friends, uh, one of whom is is a tribe member. No, I'm white through and through. This is this one is not easy. I mean, just look at me. Like, there's no way I'm native. <laughs> Everybody here's got. You know, long, very straight black hair. And like, everybody's of a very specific build. Everybody from this tribe, anyways. Very specific build. All look, kind of looks like each other. I don't look anything like them. Yeah, I hope it's there after, after COVID, Nosh. Oh, that's cool. You've got some, some Kree in you. Let's put this on before you can let's put it all the way on. No. You got it right. Yeah, the, the blonde hair really sticks out here. <laughs> it's not. I don't I don't look anything like anybody else. Octagon Cake, I'm doing well. How are you? Glad to have you here. with the robot, huh? Is that, is that who I am to you now? Oh, you're 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 probably referring to that's what the tribe thinks of me. Yes. I don't know if they know about the robot yet. I don't know if people are watching the streams. Um ooh, it looks like I'm gonna be light on screws here. Uh I need to go scrounge on the floor for whatever I dropped or go dig around in my bins. Um but yeah, I am I'm definitely the guy with the drone. Um I, I got I I was flying it, I don't know, a week or two ago when we got a bunch of snow, and I don't know, I guess I guess somebody was bothered about that. Um through the grapevine. Okay. So Yep, I need the two screws that I dropped. Wheel. <laughs> Not immediately obvious where they are. Let me see if I can find something similar. <laughs> Yeah. 
cheese. Fit. These are longer. The question is, do they fit threading on this? <laughs> You're here to get that robot out, DJ Marlis. Yes, M2 is our jam. I think this is gonna work fine. Let's put these at the bottom. Yeah, I got a little work to do on the robot. Um, I need to swap the microphone and the speaker. And then, yeah, I really want to get it up and running on Twitch. Oh, wow, that Solar Boy thing sounds really cool. How's he controlling it hundreds of kilometers away over, uh, over cellular? Oh wow, that's crazy. Yeah, I thought about doing some like long range, some LoRa or something like that to control robots here outside on the Pueblo, but the cell network here is a little bit spotty, or is way spotty. Um, so I wouldn't, I'm not sure I would trust that. Really have to have my own my own base station. Dang it! You will get them. Ooh, I think I see one this year. You will get it. Hang on. Yeah, I've not really had a chance to play with Laura, so I thought that might be a fun opportunity to build another one of these robots. I was thinking maybe we start with like an RC car platform next time for, you know, maximum success on rough terrain. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I would like to try out Starlink. Starlink sounds super cool. It would be great for, for here, actually. It would be a great secondary internet connection for here. I finally have decent internet here, but it's been on and off a problem. Cell network control of Solar Boy was a bit spotty. Base is a 4x4 RC car from the 90s. Wow, that's pretty awesome. That sounds pretty similar to what I've been thinking. Check that out. Oh, that sucks that Cody's lab can't get um, Starlink. 
Yeah, he's way out in the sticks, I think. I don't know what he's doing for his internet connection right now, but... He's got all sorts of logistic problems, I would imagine. I think he's going into town to upload. He seems, he seems like he's very much roughing it these days. Yeah, I mean, the thing is that the... Nosh, you have to keep in mind, like, the price for a lot of people that are on Starlink is no internet or internet, right? So I don't remember what the price point is, but even if it's like a couple hundred bucks a month, you know, if you're out in the sticks, like, you'd gladly pay that, you know? Um, particularly for the kind of speeds they're offering. Like, it, it's a no-brainer. Um, even out here, like, yeah. I, I am paying... I'm paying a considerable amount for a for a pretty hefty hefty package, 250 up and down. I pay a couple hundred bucks a month. What do you mean, Joran? By by Twitch interactions, Twitch chat interaction? Do you mean like this that we're doing right now, or do you mean something else? Oh, I thought, Boxkit, I thought he was in Nevada. Oh, a hundred bucks a month for Starlink? That's, that's an easy decision for, for if you're out in the sticks, that's cheap. Okay, folks, I think we have a keyboard. Something that looks like a keyboard anyway. It needs keycaps. But I think we're uh, well on the path to success here. Let's, should we put some keycaps on it? Or should we test it out? Probably should test it out in case we have to like get to, in case we have to fix stuff. <laughs> Um, why do I have extra parts? That's a good question. Okay. Ooh, I am not sure it works. I think we should plug it in. So what do we gotta do? Like flash a thing? Firmware. I think we already flashed the firmware, but I'm not sure. Let's find out. So let's see. Plug that in there. Make this a bit bigger. So. Yeah, I think we did do the flash already, Box Kid. I'm just not sure what state it's in. Oh, I was gonna plug those together before I did this. Oh wow, those backlights are per key. That's pretty cool. I'm just kinda curious to see how that ended up. All right. Ooh. Okay. It's orange on one side and red on the other, but you know. They're RGB. Yep, we've got keys. Okay, now, don't the cool kids use some sort of like testing program for testing their keyboards out? Does anybody know what that is? There's like a, a thing you put up on the screen and you push each, push each uh, key. Is it, is it QMK? Let's try that. We already have QMK. We have QMK toolbox. Is that what we want? It does not look like it. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, sorry, Dorans. Um, you, you were asking about whether I was going to do anything like the robot or things triggered in the, on, uh, on the stream in the shop. Yes. Yes. We are doing some of those things already, but there will be more. The, the robot's probably going to get its own stream, though. Oh, welcome, insert creative name here. I'm glad, uh, glad you found me. M-House, I, I haven't really considered using power tool batteries. I'm just using motorcycle batteries right now. Those worked pretty well. Um, let's get us some QMK. The QMK configurator. Yeah, I got it. Is this just online? Test. Okay. Let's do this. Let's see, let me um Probably should test this before fully assembling it, huh? Um, this is also broken. So this one, this one here have issues. Okay, and that's space, and then this side. I can't see chat right now, by the way. Maybe I should rectify because sometimes that means that folks are telling me what I'm doing wrong. Yes, we, we definitely want V working. Um, I agree. OP backspace. Okay. That's not working either. That's weird. That's the same. That's the same key that's not working on the other side, so maybe that's a configuration issue. Yeah, it's the same two that aren't that aren't working. Okay. I'm beginning to think that that is something else going on there. Okay. So The other thing is, when I plugged it in, I'm not convinced that I did the, like, tell me what keyboard this is thing on the Mac. Sorry, I'm really tired. Uh, where you press, like, you know, press the button to the left, right of the shift key, the left shift key. Um, let's look at keyboard configuration. Cannot be identified. Okay. I'm going to say it's this one and that one. Nancy. Yes. Done. Okay. So. Does this help? No. Okay. Yeah, this is a yeah 3.5 millimeter barrel jack between the two of these. All right. Will. I don't know what else we need to do. Um, I don't know how numbers keys work on this. I imagine that you have to push. There are there are no number keys. <laughs> um, I imagine you push a thing, and it's. I imagine it's similar to the Atreus. So on the Atreus, you 
have a function key, which unlocks another map here. So these are your number keys over here once you hit function. So this is upside down. Uh, oops. So your number keys are all over here. It's the blue stuff, and when you hit function, then uh, then you can use all those. Uh, oh, try V and M on the other keyboard. That's not a bad idea. Yes, that works on the other keyboard. Okay. So what the heck? I don't know. Is that a config issue? Well, the the problem is that it's that it's the same on both sides, which makes me think that it's not a hardware issue. Or not a not a wiring issue anyway. And it's the same two keys on both sides. So um, yeah, Han Sanitizer, that's a, a good suggestion. Um I'm gonna start having to wrap up the stream, unfortunately. We've got 15 minutes, so get out of here and get back up to the house before curfew. So I'm gonna be very happy when curfews over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Try just shorting the contacts. Yeah, I mean, I could. I gotta pull the pull the switches. I don't have a switch puller. chances that I like soldered those diodes backwards or I don't know. <sighs> Are there any GitHub issues for this? There probably will be another stream on the keyboard tomorrow. At least resolving this. Feature request support. The closed issues. Errors in the documentation. seeing anything that looks like this issue. Yeah, check the currently loaded key map via, I don't have via installed. Let's see if I can quickly get that.
Yeah, but the problem is, Jorand, it is exactly the same problem on both halves of the keyboard, which makes me think that it is not... Um, that it's not a hardware issue. I would be more inclined if it was if it was on one side or if it was different keys on both sides. I think it's a software issue. So it's very possible it's like a bad key map or I don't know. Yeah, I gotta get out of here, guys. Thank you for the reminder, Escape Rat. I gotta wrap up the stream, unfortunately. Would love to keep going, but. Uh, I gotta get home so I don't get in trouble. So yeah, thanks for thanks for tuning in, everybody. I appreciate it. Um, let me put you back on screen here. Is anybody interesting streaming right now? No, nobody I follow is streaming, so we can't do a raid. But uh, yeah, I don't know if I filled the hydrate. Um, I'm not seeing anything pop up in my queue until I hit reload, which is unfortunate. Uh, whose hydrate was it? Bluebird's. I'm sorry, Bluebird. I'll drink the rest of my tea in your honor. Thank you for the reminder. I gotta figure out why that's not working. <laughs> Just put put duct tape over them. Thank you all for tuning in. Um, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, this is really fun. I'm I'm excited to get this thing fully operational. So we just got got two two sets of two keys that uh we gotta figure out here. So hopefully tomorrow. Good night all. I'll uh I'll see you see you again soon. And um yeah, I'll see you hopefully uh I'll hopefully see you tomorrow. And uh, I think it'll be an earlier stream tomorrow. So I'll see you then. Stay safe and uh, stay sane. Have a good night.